Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Mr. P Tech Podcast. This is episode one. This podcast is for my friends, my family, my students, or anybody else who may be interested. If you don't know who I am, I'm a technology enthusiast. I'm interested in all forms of technology. It could be from computers or tablets or phones, getting into other types of technology like sound systems. And basically what I do is I review multiple platforms and technologies and and just see what's best for you. And hopefully in the process, you may learn something that you didn't know or if you did know a little about about something, maybe uh, maybe I can help you learn a little bit more. Uh, this podcast is going to focus on free and open source software, and I'm not going to limit myself to just that. So basically, this is a platform for me to discuss things that I'm interested in and hopefully get the word out about some different things that you may or may not know about. And since this is the first podcast, what I wanted to do is give you a little bit of history about myself, okay? Um, I've uh, loved technology since I was very young, and one of my oldest memories um, being maybe, I don't know, seven or eight years old, back in the 90s, early 90s, um, I would constantly uh, tinker with things and want to get better at uh, fixing things, even though if I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, in the mid-90s, um, I remember having to connect to old dial-up internet and uh, dial-up internet service. And um, for some reason, after days and days of trying to connect this, this old computer that we had, it would not connect to the internet. So I proceeded to to go through every single setting in this uh, internet <laughs> uh, connection that we had to sign into and after clicking on just about everything I finally was able to get the internet to uh, to to connect um, over a dial-up modem and so so over time <laughs> the fixing computers and um, experimenting with computers has sort of become a hobby with me and even though back then I probably didn't know what I was doing um, it certainly uh, I certainly thought I did at that point in time um, so I I I don't consider myself an expert by any means, but I do this as a hobby. And over the years, I have learned quite a bit. And so so in the 90s, I worked mostly with Windows. And uh, when I started working with recording equipment and recording software in the mid-2000s, I uh, I used Windows for a while, but ran into all sorts of problems with my recording software and video editing software that I that I wanted to use. And um, I eventually switched to Mac and uh, learned Mac, and I used all the software like iMovie and and um, all the free software that came with with Mac at the time. And uh, well, iMovie at the time wasn't free; it's free now. And uh, basically, what I wanted to do was. Uh, keep learning about computers. I found a real interest in it. Um, I use Windows at, at work and I use Mac at home. And anytime that I wanted to purchase new software, new audio recording software or video editing software, it was always really expensive. It was in the you know 500 to to $1,000 or more range for any type of software that I wanted to use. And eventually I sort of just stumbled across, I was looking for alternatives to uh, things that I used every day. And I I just didn't want to pay for um, what I used. And it's not because I I didn't think it was uh, something that was useful. It was very useful. I just couldn't afford it at the time. And so I I came across the free and open source software. And um, I'm not going to explain what that is right now there's there's a big movement behind all of this but um one of the first things that i came across was the gimp um and what the gimp is is it's a photoshop alternative and uh when i found this i was really amazed on how powerful the free software could be and it was it did nearly what everything what photoshop does um and it was just a free download and there were certain things that that GIMP doesn't do if you are a graphics designer and and most graphic designers prefer Photoshop. I know there are people out there that prefer GIMP as well. Um, But for someone like me who just needed to edit photos now and then, this was perfect for me because I didn't need to spend a couple hundred dollars 
on 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 Photoshop. And the same thing goes for CD deburning software. Uh, when you go into Best Buy or you want to download something off the internet you can pay up to a hundred dollars for cd burning software and i don't burn a whole lot of cds but learning you know learning free software i could i could find something that worked for me and i i didn't have to pay uh money that i didn't have so after doing this for a few months i finally realized i i, I just kind of stumbled across it one day i, I wonder if there is a, a free operating system out there you know i wonder if there's alternatives to windows that i don't know about and after just a quick search, uh, I stumbled across Linux. And that was something that I had heard about before, but I didn't really know what it was. And it's the same premise. It's it's free and open source uh, operating system. And one of the first things that I came across was uh, something called Ubuntu. And uh, th back in 2009, it was Ubuntu 9.04. And learning upon it, I realized that um, Ubuntu releases a new version of their operating system every six months. And I thought that was awesome because with Windows, you know, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, all of those all those releases, um, they happen every few years. And this was something that happened six six months at a time. And so you're always getting new software. And I, I just found a real interest in it because it was coming out so soon. And um, as I learned how to use it, there was updates every day, new software coming out every day. And I really just started to um, become to love this stuff. And it's so something that I love to talk about. So I used Ubuntu on everything that I could uh, at the time, including an old eight-year-old Dell uh, desktop with basically no specs on it. And it ran better than it did with Windows XP on it at the time. So I used Ubuntu for years, and I learned everything that I could with it. I uh, I got books, I I watched videos online, I I studied and experimented and learned what worked, what didn't work. How how I uh, learned was basically by having an old computer and just um, learning what I could do and what I couldn't do. And what I learned is I could do pretty much anything that I wanted to do. Um, and if I didn't know what I was doing, I ended up breaking something. And um, that's how I learned. And eventually I stopped doing that and and continued on and learned more about Linux. And with Linux, there are, because it's free and it's open source, anybody can make their own variant of it. And that's called a distribution. And so there are different companies out there. There are different people that make their own distributions of Linux, and there are literally hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, Linux distributions out there, all with different names, and it can be a little confusing. And so I began to hop around, um, and this is called distro hopping. Um, just out of curiosity, I wanted to learn about all these different types of Linux uh, distributions out there, and in the process, I, I learned a whole lot more. And so after a few years, I, I really still loved Ubuntu, but after after a while, um, I came across something called Arch Linux, and for me, Arch Linux was, was great because not only um, did I can just install it on my computer and I don't have to upgrade every six months, but I can get constantly new software anytime that it's put out, usually within a matter of hours. So if a new piece of software comes out, I can I can have it within a matter of hours and it's constantly updated and sort of on the bleeding edge of new software and new technology. And that's something that I'm interested in. So most of my computers at home run Linux now. I have a Chromebook that's running Linux. I have a System76 computer that's running Linux. Um, I also have a Mac at home, I'll be honest. Um, I, I use my Mac uh, for various reasons what I'll get to get into in just a few minutes. Um, and I use Windows every day at work. Uh, so as I said earlier, I don't consider myself an expert, but I do consider myself to be a power user. Um, I'm not involved with the IT field. Um, and my day job, I'm a music teacher during the day. So I'm doing this as a hobby. And what I've shared and what I've learned over the last few months is, um, you know, I, I have struggles that find find you know, I have struggles finding great software that works without having to pay a lot of money. And so what I want to do in this podcast is talk about a lot of things that may help you save money um, and things that you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on to to be productive. Uh, so what I came up with a few months ago is um, I wanted to start doing some technology reviews on software, hardware, anything that I really kind of came across. So 
what I did is I created a YouTube channel, and it's called MRP Tech Reviews, or Mr. P Tech Reviews. And I did a few reviews on Windows 10. I did a few reviews on some iOS apps. And most recently, I did a review on a couple of uh, free and open pieces of software. Uh, one of them was VLC, which is a media player. And with VLC, you can basically play any type of file, any type of audio file. So, for instance, I had a f audio file from early 2000s that was some random format. It was a webcast, and iTunes could not play it, and Media Player could not do it. And VLC loaded it right up and played instantly as soon as I dragged it into VLC. And the, I use VLC more than anything just because I know it's going to work, it's going to play, and I don't have to worry about Windows or iTunes or anything like that. Um, I, I've really started using VLC just about every day. And for my audio production, um, when I'm looking to, to edit some audio for my students or for um, just anything that I do, any podcast that I do, or I want to record some, some instruments or something like that, I'm going to use Audacity because it's very simple to use. It's really just start it up and hit the record button and you're good to go. Um, and so so I've I've reviewed a couple of those on YouTube and also if you have just subscribed to this RSS feed um, when I was testing the RSS feed I put those audio clips in the RSS feed it's not the video um, I'm still working on that I will get the video out eventually on RSS um, but basically I was just testing it out and um, you can listen to those or go watch the the reviews on YouTube um, I've got also got a Facebook page. It's MRP Tech Reviews. Uh, hopefully you will take a look at that and subscribe to our Facebook page. Um, and you can also email me, mrptechreviews at gmail.com. Give me some ideas for future podcast episodes. And um, I would really like to keep this going. And my goal is to get a bunch of episodes out within the first few months and maybe start off weekly and then switch to bi-weekly or once a month once I get going. Um, this is all an experiment and this is something that I enjoy doing. And the reason I enjoy doing this is because it gives me a platform to talk about all the free software that I use and maybe I can get my, my, my friends or relatives to switch over to using free software and, and save them some money at the same time. As well as there's a, there's a personal reason that I'm I'm doing this as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a music teacher. I've also have a, a a local professional band, and I run a a big band of made of music teachers and other professional musicians in my area. And so doing this gets me to experiment with my recording software and my my mixer that I use, and it helps me uh, just get better at editing and better at creating a professional sound so so this is there's there's two different reasons for for me to do this and one is getting information out there and one i get to learn as i do this and so thank you for listening i hope you uh, send me some feedback i hope you give me some ideas to talk about i've got a couple of great shows in the works and uh, subscribe to our rss feed if you want our shows um, to uh, just download to your devices and check out our YouTube channel, check out our Facebook page, and you can always send me an email. And thanks again for listening to episode one.